Hi, I'm Jennifer Marvin, a volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association and a member of the Eastern Shore Walk to End Alzheimer's Committee. And today we're going to be talking to you about um, why people walk in our walk. We have three guests with us today that are going to share their stories with you and talk with you a little bit about um, maybe some fundraising and um, tips and suggestions for you to start your own team with the Eastern Shore Walk to End Alzheimer's. Uh, the walk is coming up on Saturday, November the 3rd. It's going to be at um, the Mac Center in Salisbury off of Snow Hill Road. And you can still register your team. There's plenty of time to do so and plenty of time to raise money uh, for your team. So we'll have the website where you can register at the end of the program and uh, share a little more details with you then about the program. So my first guest uh, today is Kelsey Maddox, and she is a team captain, and her team is uh, through the National Organization of Alpha Kappa Alpha, and uh, she's with the Delta Sigma Omega chapter. Welcome, Kelsey. Thank you. So could you tell us uh, how many years you have walked uh, so far in the walk? This is the fourth year. Our um, national organization adopted Alzheimer's as a target four years ago, and so we've been encouraged to participate in the walks each year. Oh, that's wonderful. That's always great to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you walk personally? Any stories that you could share with us? Well, there's two things. Professionally, I am a registered nurse and I have spent many years teaching, and one of the things I taught about was Alzheimer's disease and how to manage people with Alzheimer's disease. And secondly, a year and a half ago, my mom died mm -hmm. with dementia, and uh, she was also a nurse. So there's two reasons that we need to look at this, is one is personally and the other is professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people seem to have a personal connection to mm -hmm. the disease. So yeah. I'm sorry to hear about your mom. Yeah, and it's it's so important, um, I'm sure you know as a nurse, to get the education out there to um, everyone about, you know, how devastating the disease can right. be. Yeah. And it's, it's really different um, teaching about it and helping people cope with it mm -hmm. than it is to have to cope with it yourself every right. single day. It seemed like it would be an easy thing to do to apply all the methods and thoughts that I had taught other people. Mm -hmm. But working with it on a day-to-day -day and having her live with me for five years before she actually died opened my insight, gave me more insight. Right, right. It was almost probably harder to be the caregiver than it is to be an educator. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, I, and also, um, one of our state, one of our state delegates, had asked me to write a letter prior to this really happening, on behalf of a bill that she was sponsoring. The name of which I don't remember at this point, and I did. It was just beginning with my mother, so the letter that I could write supporting her bill was ap was really much more compelling mm -hmm. because of the fact that I was beginning to experience this myself. Okay. And what made it even more difficult is my mom was an extremely bright woman. She also is a nurse. And she kept thinking she was going crazy. And she'd say things to me like, I'm going crazy. What's happening to me? And that was really hard before it appeared that she didn't truly understand that she wasn't recognizing what was going on. But initially, it was very difficult for her and for me and the rest of my family. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, for those that are, you know, dealing with such a devastating disease out there, do you have any um, words of wisdom to share with them? Well, it's really, my mom and I were the only family members that lived here because we were originally from the Connecticut area. Mm -hmm. So it, it truly meant the full-time responsibility was mine. And I retired so that I could stay home with her once I knew that she could no longer live by herself and moved her in with me. It's important to have respite, and respite in your home. So I had some friends who would come to the house, and I'd give them each month or each week what my needs were for getting out the following week, and, and they would come regularly. Mm -hmm. 
and they'd stay with her so I could continue to go to the movies, I could go out to dinner with friends, and not feel guilty because they loved her. Uh -huh. They had known her a long time and they loved her. Yeah, that's great that you could get that time to yourself, but know that she was being well taken right. care of at home. Mm -hmm. It's certainly, um, it, it's not a, a one person job. It sound, you know, sounds like you, you, know, you definitely need a lot of support mm -hmm. around you. And I think the other piece of it, when we talk about caregiver burnout, is it was good to get away, but there came a point when my mom was up, up and down all night long. Mm -hmm. And I have an old two-story farmhouse, and she was ambulatory. But I was, when she began to fall, at times I didn't sleep well because I was afraid she was going to injure herself. So my sister, who lives out of state, had suggested I get someone there at nighttime with her. But there's also this feeling that if I bring somebody else in to take care of her, then I'm not being a good daughter. And my mom was a wonderful mother. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, it sounds like you took great care of her um, through the disease, and I'm sure it was a difficult journey. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing that, you know, with us and, and the viewers. Um, to just to, you know, wrap up, would you have any suggestions or tips or fundraising ideas for those who have um, teams for the walk? One of the things that um, seems to work is if you have something so like a bakeless bake sale, mm -hmm. which I'm doing with another group, where you, no one has to bake anything. You just decide that a cake is $5 and a pie is whatever the prices are, and people give a donation. Uh -huh. But since many of us don't like to cook anymore, you don't have to cook. Uh -huh. <laughs> so those are things that are fairly simple to do. Right. Just requires having some envelopes and a list of what your prices are. Mm -hmm. And the person who is on a diet doesn't have to worry about the calories. And those of us who don't like to cook don't have to cook. Uh -huh. Well, that would be me. So, yeah, that, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> well, thanks so much, uh, Kelsey, for sharing those ideas with us and talking with us about why you walk. Okay, thank you very much. Joining me now in the studio is Bill Martin, and he is with Team ERA for the Eastern Shore Walk to End Alzheimer's. He is also a co-chair of the walk committee and uh, has been doing so and part of that committee for the past 10 years. Uh, we also would like to mention that uh, Rhonda Evans is the chair of Team ERA, and uh, they have also been assisted greatly by Lori Cannon, who um, they recently had a wonderful fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association. It was a yard sale. Um, that, you know, helped raise a lot of money. So um, we definitely want to thank her for her efforts on that endeavor. So welcome, Bill. Thank you very much for inviting me here. The yard sale was tremendous this year. It's our second yard sale. Uh -huh. And uh, Lori really got the act together and, and improved it a lot from last year. Um, what we did was we uh, communicated to all of our past customers and invited them to bring their treasures and store them in our on our property. And then on Saturday, the 29th of, of uh, September, we had the yard sale itself, and we had people from all over the community coming in, and uh, we had a tremendous mountain of treasures that uh, people were buying up. We made $2,000 in a single day, so it was a good Wonderful. fundraiser. And all the money, of course, goes to Alzheimer's. The cube that we used to store the stuff was uh, furnished by the cube to go people and uh, they didn't charge us anything for it. Wells Fargo bought the tables, rented the tables that we used to display all the merchandise. So it was, there was no overhead basically and uh, it's all, all profit. Wonderful. Yeah, what an, a great fundraiser. I know that we all have lots of things in our homes that we just want to clean out and get rid of. So and make way for new treasures exactly. that you can buy at the at yes, the yard yes, sale. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And it's so great to hear, um, you know, other community, you know, organizations and businesses coming together to assist with your efforts. Yeah. And two thousand okay. dollars is fantastic. Yeah. Towards the the goal. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, have you also been walking in the walk for about 10 years as well? Yeah, about 10 years. And uh, for the first few years, my mother was still alive and, and she walked. Mm -hmm. Then we pushed her in a wheelchair <clears throat> when she got to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then she passed away four years ago. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, my grandson was born a half hour before she died. Oh, my goodness. So my grands, uh, grandson, um, Maddox, mm -hmm. uh, came into life just about the time wow. she departed. So mm -hmm. it was an interesting timing. And uh, we stayed active in the walk and continue, plan to continue to stay active in the walk. Mm -hmm. So your mom uh, had a journey with Alzheimer's disease. Yes, and my family went through a nightmare trying to <clears throat> take care of her and keep her at home. And, and then she, we had to take the car away, of course, at some point. Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a nightmare. And sure. <clears throat> she didn't want to leave her home. and right. She had to eventually. Yeah. And uh, we tried to care for her, but it was really too much after a while. Right, yeah. right. So we had to, had to put her in Mallard Landing, which is a fantastic facility, mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, they took wonderful care. Of her. Yeah. But uh, it was very difficult. She forgot how to eat at the end and mm -hmm. really deteriorated. And, um, it really is just, you know, a, a devastating disease and, and what mm -hmm. happens, you know, to the, the person as they progress, you know, through those stages and, um, you know, forget to do the, the simple things that we, you know, do day to day. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize how much it affects the family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's not just the person suffering from the disease. Sure. The family members are um, have difficulty getting to work, take care of the mother or father, whoever's got Alzheimer's. And well, I'm sure that's why difficult. that you became involved with the Alzheimer's Association and you know um, stand behind the programs and and things that they do to help support you know the family members. Yes, there's some great programs that really do help the family members, and a lot of the money that's raised goes to that valuable. Um, resource and it's, it's wonderful great um you know you shared with us the the yard sale are there other tips or suggestions that you have for um for teams as they're raising money uh i think you just try to ask and let people know that uh, that you are available and you want their assistance and, and they'll come forward mm -hmm. Uh, I know we've we send out a letter every year telling them about our involvement in in the uh, walk, mm -hmm. and we get uh, donations from people we hardly know, and and a lot of times they'll communicate that they're so happy to to contribute to such a valuable uh, resource, mm -hmm. and that they've been touched by the disease, and or someone in their family has been touched by the disease. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a tremendous. Uh, feeling that people get to be able to help in, in that. Yeah, it, it just, it, it's amazing everywhere that I go and, and you talk to someone and in some way, you know, they mm -hmm. either themselves or someone that they know has been touched by this disease. So you know, raising money is so important to try to find, you know, a cure and, and mm -hmm. also to continue to support those great programs that the Alzheimer's Association has. Right. A good part of the money that's raised goes towards uh, the finding a cure for Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. they've had some nice news releases this year about some new progress that they're making with some possible uh, cures. So mm -hmm. we're optimistic that maybe in the future there will be uh, somebody who outlives Alzheimer's. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to see that, that right. first, you know, first survivor. survivor. Yes, absolutely. And um, you've been um, a great um, supporter of getting, you know, sponsors for the Alzheimer's Association as well, and specifically for the Eastern Shore Walk. And um, I know those opportunities as we get closer to the walk, um, you know, maybe less, but um, that, that's certainly a big piece as well. Yes, we're looking for more sponsors, and uh, I think sponsors contributed over $30,000 to the money raised last year. And... Um, we're, of course, every year you have to do better than the previous year, so we have to beat that, that number and try to get, a, get more donations. We get some in-kind donations. We've been very fortunate to have donations from a lot of the media in the area, including uh, the billboard company, 
contributed some billboards. Uh, we've had newspaper articles and news releases and uh, lots of uh, donations of in-kind service. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a lot of people know about the Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. uh, the Metropolitan has donated uh, their profits from their best of mm -hmm. fundraiser. And last year that totaled about $10,000. And for the first time, uh, they're giving the same agency money the second year. So Alzheimer's has been fortunate to get another donation for this year. And the, um, the Metropolitan is going to donate all the funds raised by their Best Of program, which I think is uh, airs very soon. Mm -hmm. That is so wonderful. And we certainly thank the Metropolitan and all of, you know, the businesses that have, you know, donated and sponsored so far. So if you're a business um, out there or you know, interested in sponsoring, there are still opportunities to do so. And we'll have information at the end of the program on, on how you can contact us and um, make those donations. Well, thank you, Bill. It's been a pleasure talking with you're you. Welcome. And thank you for sharing your story Thank with you us. for all that you do with the program. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. And the next guest on our program today is Gail Smith. She is the chair of the Eastern Shore Walk to End Alzheimer's Committee and also the captain of her team, the Bower Beach Bunch. And uh, she's also on the board of the Maryland chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. So welcome, Gail, and thank you for all of those duties that you do. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for having us. Yes. Um, so. First, tell us how many years you have walked in the walk. Well, this is my fourth year walking. Uh, we did two years in Harford County before we relocated to the Eastern Shore, and now we've done two years. Um, this will be our second year here at, um, at the Eastern Shore Walk. Great. Um, and share with us why you are walking. I am walking in honor of my sister, who was diagnosed at age 63. Uh, just a little over four years ago, so a, a younger diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, she was a, or she is a retired uh, special education teacher. She taught her entire career in Baltimore City, retired at age 62, and at age 63 was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Oh, goodness. So um, she's my only sister, and uh, we're together through thick and thin, so that's why I walk. Oh, well, that's wonderful, and she, it's great that she has you and your support. Um, so, Gail, would you have any advice for, you know, caregivers as you've been taking care of your sister over these last several years? Caregiving is your new full-time job, um, and I think one of the most important things, and I think Kelsey uh, touched on it, is uh, respite for the caregiver, um, taking time for yourself. Um, I am not my sister's primary caregiver, her husband is. Um, however, I, you know, I, I do help quite a bit, but it's very, very important for the caregiver to take time for themselves, um, stay healthy themselves. You can't take care of someone if you're not healthy yourself. Um, and just make sure that you get time for yourself. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to watch a loved one deteriorate like someone does with this disease. So taking care of the caregiver, and the caregiver doesn't always get all the credit that the caregivers deserve. It's a very, very difficult task. Right, very demanding. Yes. Wonderful advice, thank you. Sure. Yeah, early onset Alzheimer's, uh, you know, many people probably don't realize, maybe even exist. So we think of Alzheimer's disease in our 70s, 80s, and 90s, but um, it, it certainly does affect uh, people in their, you know, 50s, 60s, sometimes even earlier. Yes. And, um, you know, it's important, you know, that, that people understand that, you know, there are risks out there, you know, to, you know, have the disease much earlier and just, uh, just another reason of why it's so important to find a cure for this disease. It's a terrible disease and, you know, it's, it's the only uh, top 10 fatal disease that has no prevention, mm -hmm. no treatment, and no cure. So it's, it's, it's a devastating diagnosis. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. I, I think it's, it's great that, you know, we are um, just recently, you know, received word of additional funding of research and, um, you know, through NIH and, and Congress passed that. So, um, you know, just another, you know, step in the right direction, but um, certainly a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. But a lot of work is getting done. There's been some um, major advances. 
Um, still not a cure. That's what we're that's what we're hoping for. But at the Alzheimer's Association, we believe that the first survivor of Alzheimer's disease is alive today. Yes. So and you know at the walk we have a flower ceremony, and the flowers are different colors, each one representing uh, different. Whether you're a person with the disease or a caregiver, um, we've introduced last year a white flower, and we have a young person uh, this year. It will be my granddaughter carrying the flower, the white flower, and that white flower symbolizes a cure for the disease. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so, you know, in your four years of walking, could you, uh, you know, give the viewers a few suggestions on fundraising ideas and tips? Well, you know, I start with family and friends. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the lowest hanging fruit. <laughs> um, and uh, that's where the bulk of our fundraising has come from. Um, but a lot of, you know, a lot of people come up with some pretty unique ideas and one of the, one I, I think is a really good idea is to partner with a local restaurant mm -hmm. and have them do a give back night. Um, sometimes they'll donate, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent of, of their evening's uh, take uh, yeah. back to the Alzheimer's uh, Association. This year, um, the Bower Beach Bunch is partnering with Rope Walk Ocean City and on the day of the walk, um, Rope Walk Ocean City will donate 25% of your of their sales to the Alzheimer's Association um, if you bring in our flyer, which is available on the walk website. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I we can get some right, fill it viewers up. Let's out get there, <laughs> yeah, to the Rope Walk on the third. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So, um, any other ideas? Well, I know that um, some of the other walk teams have done different things like um, raffle baskets. Uh, one of the teams raffled, had a local restaurant donate a bushel of crabs, some shrimp, uh, I think a Smith Island cake. Mm -hmm. So they raffled off a, a crab feast. That mm -hmm. I think they raised a good bit of money from that. Um, they've also done some, uh, had someone donate pit beef sandwiches mm -hmm. and then they sold the pit beef sandwiches and all the all the proceeds went to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, so, you know, just be creative. You know, you never know. Right. You never know. Yeah, those are all great ideas. And, you know, I think just what we've seen from talking with you and Bill and Kelsey is just, you know, how the community really comes together and, you know, supports one another in their efforts and donates sandwiches or, you know, other items to help make these events possible. Um, so we really couldn't do it without one another. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, thank you so much, Gail. And um, just to, you know, remind everyone at home, uh, we do have the walk coming up on November 3rd. Again, there is plenty of time to register your team. Um, the website uh, that you would go on to register is act.alz.org and uh, find the Eastern Shore Walk and go ahead and register. Um, again, plenty of time to, you know, fundraise for the walk. Um, Hopefully some of the ideas that we shared with you today um, you'll find helpful. We do have a Facebook group page. Um, it's the Eastern Shore Walk to End Alzheimer's, so you can search for that and, and join as a member of the group. We've been sharing uh, lots of great fundraiser ideas um, and, and current fundraisers that are going on right now. So, um, you know, be sure to, um, to add that group to your Facebook. Um, again, the walk on November 3rd will be at the Mac Center here in Salisbury. It's on Progress Circle, which is right off of Snow Hill Road. Um, the registration begins at 9 a.m. We have, uh, as Gail mentioned, a wonderful ceremony at 10 a.m. Um, where we'll have those promised flowers and um, some great speakers, live music, uh, really get the, the celebration and, and the ceremony and the walk started. Um, at 10.30 is the walk. It's two and a half miles, and um, it's going to be a really fun and exciting day. So uh, we look forward to having everyone out there that day. So thank you so much for watching. Hi, I'm Kelsey Maddox and I'm captain of the Delta Sigma Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha International Walk Team. And the walk is to end Alzheimer's as we know it. The walk is November 3rd, 
2018. And it kicks off at the Mac Center on Snow Hill Road. I'm Bill Martin with Team ERA, ERA Martin Associates, and we're walking to cure Alzheimer's on November 3rd. Hi, I'm Gail Smith. I'm the team captain of the Bower Beach Bunch. We are walking in the eastern shore, walk to end Alzheimer's on November 3rd at the Mac Center in Salisbury.